Uh, my name is Wanda Morris, and I am the executive director of Dying with Dignity Canada. Our mandate is to improve quality of dying and to expand end-of-life choices. We are Canada's largest Right to Die or mm -hmm. Dying with Dignity organization. We were founded over 30 years ago here in Toronto. Uh, our first executive director was a registered nurse, and she'd been at the bedside of people that had died horribly and decided that she needed to do something about it. The um, initial program that the uh, organization put on was simply helping people that were facing the prospect of a horrific death mm -hmm. and uh, helping them understand their options and if they chose to end their lives rather than suffer through to the end, we could be there with them at the time. Uh, my name is Taylor Purden. Um, my mother is Maureen Taylor and she was married to Dr. Donald Lowe for five years and they were together for eight. Hi, I'm Dr. Donald Lowe. Uh, infectious disease internal medicine physician at Mount Sinai Hospital. Um, I was diagnosed as having a brainstem tumor February 7th, 2013. I'm worried about how it's going to end. I know it's got to end. It's, not, it's never going to get better. So I'm going to die. And what worries me is how I'm going to die. In Canada, it's illegal. And... Uh, It'll be a long time before we, we mature to a, uh, to a level where we accept dying with dignity. We, we knew he was doing the video. We didn't know that it was going to be, um, have the impact that it did, obviously. First of all, I, I love Donald's language. Yeah. When he talked about the need to have dying with dignity, mm -hmm. which is really the right way to frame the discussion. Mm -hmm. I think you can't talk about assisted suicide without using the suicide word, and that has such a negative connotation. So I thought he did a real strength for the movement and for us by using the language of, of dying with dignity. In February, I believe the date was February 18th, although that is a very cloudy week that week. Um, uh, my, my brother actually was the one who told me, and yeah, we, my, my now husband and I were in Chicago, and I just remember feeling very helpless, and. It, yeah, we, we knew from the beginning it was quite serious. As a doctor, he knew there wasn't a lot of options. Um, the, the, he was convinced to try chemo and it, uh, it didn't really alleviate any of the symptoms or anything. So there, there wasn't that discussion yet of, of how to progress anything along. Um, that was, I think, a discussion he, he kept between him and my mother very much, but she shared his feelings with us, so, so we knew that he, you know. <laughs> Once he knew it was where it was going to get, he was exploring options. Unfortunately, there were no options in Canada, but um, he, it wasn't until the end that it really started to, it really started to uh, be an issue. The hope is that I'll die a painless death. That uh, ideally I would go to sleep one night and I would not wake up in the morning. I'm able to face death without the fear uh, of death itself. I'm not afraid of dying. Uh, I could make that decision tomorrow. So, I just don't want to be a long protracted out process where I'm unable to, unable to carry out my normal bodily functions and, and talk with my family uh, and, you know, enjoy the last few days of my life. The fear is that that is not going to happen. Do you remember the last time that you saw him? Um, conscious or not? I mean, not conscious, either. the last time I saw him was about four days before he died. That was the last time he was conscious. I remember it was a Friday when the doctor, the palliative care doctor told us it was gonna be a matter of hours to days. He didn't pass away until Wednesday. And I remember every day we'd turn to each other and say, how can this keep going? Like he hasn't had a drink of water. He hasn't had any food. How, how much longer can this go on? Like it was just terrible seeing him like that and his breathing and it, it just, that wasn't done.
When we talk about medically assisted dying, it's really an umbrella term and it refers to two things. The first is where an individual is able to take a lethal dose of medication and they take it themselves. And that is the type of remedy that we have in uh, many US, US jurisdictions like Oregon and Washington. The other uh, type of medically assisted dying is what we call voluntary euthanasia, where somebody asks for and is given assistance to die, usually in the form of administered lethal dose of medication. I think a, a main point of, of what John and my mother were really wanting was in the States, doctors can die, can sorry, prescribe you a drug and then you take it on your own with your family. This is something that they write a prescription and you do on your own time with your family and, and you physically do it. And the idea of medically assisted dying is to give people who want it, so not everybody, just people that want it and are really suffering horribly at end of life, a choice, another way for them to go. I understand that it is a very sensitive issue and it is definitely not one to that we should take lightly. Uh, However, I don't think that as baby boomers get older, they're going to really put up with this type of death that, that Don went through. And, and I think that, that regardless of Stephen Harper wanting to talk about it or not, it's being talked about. And, and I hope that in, in the next decade or so, change will come. That, that's my hope. Many people suffer horrifically at end of life, but that's not going to change until ordinary Canadians start to stand up and ask for what they want. In a compassionate society, nobody should have to suffer at end of life. Uh, there's a lot of opposition to it. A lot of clinicians op have opposition to dying with dignity. I wish they could live in my body for 24 hours, and I think they would change that, change that opinion. What's one thing you would want to say to Don if you had a chance to? Um, thank you for the years with my mom. Thank you for um, everything you've done. And we miss you and we love you.